Good afternoon. Okay, I don't get any response. Are you all alive and ready to go? Good. Are we, are we providing credits? Whoever's here gets credits for this class, for this lecture? I think we do, huh? That's good. Okay, let me uh, take the opportunity to talk a little bit about our program. Um, we started about a month or a couple of months ago with the first speaker, who was uh, Steve Lear from uh, ArchCo, Chairman and CEO. Subsequently, we had uh, Ben Statler speaking to our students, and that was October the 10th. On the 17th, we had uh, uh, Chris Poon, who is a dean of the Ohio State Business School and former uh, vice chairman of J&J. Today, we're gonna have uh, one of our own, uh, Bill Shitty, who graduated from our school in 1988. In fact, when you look at him, you're going to think, well, he probably graduated in 2001, but he did graduate in 1988, been very successful. And Monday, we're going to have a, another uh, key note speaker, and that is uh, uh, Kelly King, the Chairman and CEO of uh, BBNT. For next year, starting probably January, February, we'll have another four, hopefully four or five uh, CEOs of, uh, of high stature. And again, the whole idea is, for our students in particular, is not only to learn from our faculty and our professors, which is probably the major source of knowledge and learning, but also to learn from you know, exposure to the world and books and, and everything else, and also from people who have done very well in business. And so this is the whole purpose. But before we go any further, let me introduce, uh, uh, say a few words about uh, Bill, okay? As a group of uh, group president for the Americas, Yoshiri oversees the company's clientele or client relationships with card issuers, merchants, merchant acquirers, and third-party pro uh, processors in North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. More recently, Shiri served as president of North America and the global head of corporate strategy and business development. Prior to his leadership role in Visa's corporate restructuring in 2007 and the successful initial public offering in 2008, he was responsible for expanding merchant acceptance and consumer usage of Visa while providing oversight of areas responsible for industry cost and revenue studies, merchant incentive programs, and improving the point of sales operating performance of Visa products. She has uh, also been key in supporting uh, Visa product and brand strategies, as well as other initiatives that are critical to realizing Visa's long-term growth potential. He joined uh, Visa USA in May 1993. Prior to that, he spent three years with Ford Motor Company's first nationwide bank, where he was responsible for asset and liability planning and profit expense forecasting. He holds a BS from West Virginia University and an MBA from University of Notre Dame. Bill, welcome. Well, good afternoon. Um, as I uh, thought about the opportunity to come here and speak today, it's been 20 years since I've been on campus. Uh, I live in San Francisco now. It's not easy to get to Morgantown from there. Uh, I have, uh, I'm honored uh, not only to speak with you today, I'm also honored to have a number of family members. My sister, uh, two nephews I, uh, are here, and uh, I have deep roots uh, to West Virginia and to the university. And while I've been at Visa, and we'll talk a little bit about what I do at Visa, maybe a little bit about what Visa is, um, I would say that the 18 years I've spent there is, are no more memorable than the four years I spent in Morgantown. Um, so I, I'm very enthusiastic, very pleased to be here. As I thought about this time, uh, as you might imagine in my role, I spent a lot of time talking to employees about what we're trying to get done inside the company. I'm not going to talk to you about what we're trying to do inside the company. I'll bore you to tears. Uh, I spent a lot of time talking to investors, trying to get them to be interested in the stock and to think about us differently and to buy more and sell less. Uh, I just don't think that that's all that interesting to you. And Frank, actually, it's a little um, arrogant for me to sit up here and think about um, being all that relevant to you. Because I, I, I do remember what it was like 
going through classes, getting a degree, you're particularly interested in what your job is going to be when you get out. And I'll give you some, uh, maybe a little bit of insight into how I got to where I am. Um, I'll give you some thoughts about what I thought was important to me, recognizing that what I wanted and what I want now is probably different than what many of you want. But to the extent that it's helpful, um, I'll keep my comments relatively short. Um, I'm also going to include a little bit of information about the company, only because I think it may be interesting. Um, who Visa is is probably different than what most of you all think. Um, and since I think that there's some things about um, where the company's going that are probably important to your respective wallets, either today or tomorrow, it might be interesting. Because I think that there's some things happening just in general life with mobile phones and social networks and other things online that um, are going to change how we're operating as a company. It's things that you're going to see as a consumer. So I'll talk a little bit about that. You also see a Super Bowl spot that even our CEO hasn't seen. It isn't running yet. Um, so you'll actually be the first folks outside the company to see it. So that's, I think, kind of cool. And, um, <clears throat> and the company's changed quite a bit. Um, so. There'll be, hopefully I'll tell you a story that'll be interesting and we'll have a discussion at the very end about the things that I have found that have been most important in helping me with my career and the things that I would, if I were talking to my nephew, nephews or uh, to my son, how I would ask that they prioritize um, the things that are important for them. Here's what I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you to be passionate and to uh, dive into whatever you're going to do in your life. That's really important, as you'll see hopefully over the course of my comments. I love what I'm doing, um, but it's too high level and it's kind of cliche for me to stand up here and tell you, be passionate. I'm going to take it down a notch and be a little bit more specific, hopefully a little bit more substantive about the things that I have found that are important. And if you get some of that along the way that are helpful to you, then, then great. And if not, maybe you'll like the commercial. So, um, it's my... Uh, my <laughs> It's my uh, senior photo from the fraternity. I was at Delta Tau Delta, uh, which has now been kicked off campus, by the way. Um, so I've already, I've already introduced myself. Uh, so I grew up in central Pennsylvania. A number of my younger brother, my older sister, uh, I have an older brother and went to Westland, so very connected to the state. Uh, so I grew up in a community near Altoona called Hollidaysburg. It's a friend of mine at, at uh, Visa refers to it as Haldisburgville. I get a lot of grief uh, for being from uh, the middle of nowhere. I came from uh, Haldisburg to West Virginia. In 1988, when I graduated, I went directly to graduate school. Uh, for those of you who are fans of football, you'll know that in my first year at Notre Dame, Notre Dame and West Virginia played each other in the national championship, uh, which was a conflict for me because my dad went to Notre Dame. I'm an Irish Catholic, lifelong West Virginia and Notre Dame fan. Uh, it actually sounds better than it was. It was a difficult game to watch. Uh, and I came directly to San Francisco out of, West, out of uh, Notre Dame. So I've been out on the West Coast for 22 years. Uh, it's almost it's half my life. I'm 44. So um, as my family is here today, they know that I'm constantly traveling. I'm unfortunately rarely home. Um, but again, I'm, I'm honored to be here. It's a cool place to be from, but I'll tell you, there's no place um, like uh, close to home and with friends, and, and it's a lonely place because I am far away from family. The dean was very nice in giving me the opportunity to talk, uh, talk a little bit about my role. Uh, I, I suspect that it's difficult to understand what the heck does group president of Visa mean. I'm going to talk in a minute about what the company does because, again, I think that most of you probably think of us as a credit card company. It gets blurry in your head about what the banks do and what Visa does. Um, but let me just talk about the organization. So I report to chairman and CEO of the company. It's a global company. We operate in over 200 countries around the world. Um, the left-hand side of this chart, I've greatly simplified the organizational structure because I don't want to bore you. And frankly, there's not a lot that's interesting. Every company on the planet has these functions off to the left, so I won't talk about them. The way that we organize. The president of the company has the brand, the systems, uh, some of the product development, the call centers, all of the things that make our products work. But the two group presidents to the right, I'm responsible for the Americas, which is about 6.3 billion in revenue. Um, in this upcoming year, we'll, we'll have a pre-tax profit, pre pre -tax profit uh, goal for my part of the business is about $4 billion. It's a big business. 
Uh, it's about 75% of the company's P&L. So I'm responsible for all the countries in the Americas, about 44 countries, depending upon how you count them, uh, all the banks that issue the cards, all of the merchants that accept the cards, all the technology providers in between that make the network work, uh, the folks that um, are in my organization handle all of that. Um, I'm also responsible for credit, debit, prepaid products. Every product you can think of, I've got product managers who spend all their time thinking about what those products should be. Um, <clears throat> and while I've got the brand over here to the left, people who produce these commercials that you're going to see here in a minute, um, I've got the advertising dollars, so I determine sort of how much uh, advertising, how much marketing goes into Brazil and Argentina and U.S., et cetera. So that's what I do. Um, actually, what I do is I sit in meetings all day. Other people do all this work. So um, I just pretty much talked to all of that. All right. So that's what I do for a living, how we're organized generally. Let me talk to you a little bit about what Visa is, because as I've mentioned probably three times now, I think that you probably would be surprised about what the company is. Uh, we are a brand payment services company. What does that mean? Uh, as much as every senior executive at every company on the planet will tell you that the number one asset is our employees, and we absolutely uh, echo that. Quickly thereafter, what you all know, what's unique about us is our brand. Uh, it has a very clear global connotation. Whomever came up with the name Visa was a genius back in the very early 1970s because the, the pronunciation of it works in most every language uh, that's uh, in use today. And it, it truly is a global brand that has very clean, very, uh, very powerful connotations that help us leverage our business. We're also, in fact, the biggest chunk of our employees are technology IT related. We're not a bank, as you'll see here in a moment. We're a technology company. We, we facilitate transactions between consumers and merchants and people online in the physical world that no, don't know each other. And it, and it works just because of everything that's been built inside of our processing and our technology and our, our uh, telecommunications infrastructure. So that's what we do. Just to clarify the point, we're not a credit card company. It drives me nuts when I read in the press, Visa, the credit card company. First of all, Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, they issue credit cards, we don't. We make them work because of the brand and the systems. More importantly, because of all the issues attended to credit, and you all know this because you're frankly our target market, 70% of our transactions in the United States aren't credit, they're debit cards uh, and prepaid cards. So. That's where the growth is. Consumers don't really, they're not really wild about debt. In fact, they just want to transact more conveniently with the monies that they, that they have in their checking account. When I think about the cool things that we do as a company, we make that happen. Because when I started the company, you'll see this timeline in a second, in 1993, that didn't really work. It didn't exist. So we don't lend money. We don't set interest rates. So don't come up and talk to me afterwards about your credit line. It's just not what we do. All we are is a technology service provider to the banks. We think we're a good one, but uh, so if you've got an issue with your credit card, talk to them. So um, I mentioned the brand. It's being very important. Um, one of the ways we enhance the brand, build the brand equities, connect with consumers and merchants uh, is by advertising the brand. There are three basic properties that we leverage in the context of our brand. The Olympics, which you'll see with the London coming up in 2012. FIFA, which used to not be relevant in the United States. I know you all get that soccer is now hugely relevant. Uh, but the third property that we uh, leverage, which is US specific primarily, is the NFL. So we have just started last week with a new NFL campaign. Um, and uh, foreshadowing something we're going to talk about later on in the presentation, the ways in which we market the brand has changed materially or just over the last two or three years. What you're going to see here is a spot that's never going to run on TV. It's all digital. This will primarily get launched on NFL.com and Facebook and Visa.com. The reason why it's not going to run on uh, TV is it's, it's too long. It's about 90, 90 seconds. But, um, but it's connected very much to a mass media campaign that you'll see on Fox and the other network that handles NFL. And um, it's an it's a, uh, NFL promotion tied to Super Bowl tickets, and I think it speaks for itself. Once upon a time. Hey man, what's up? Hey man, what's up? A man called Ned. Three grams of fiber. Bought some necessities. Yeah, not sure. Right. 
It's all free today. And what was supposed to be an everyday purchase? Yeah, just swipe right there on the swipe reader. Suddenly turned into something very special. Have a good one. Congratulations. Ten Super Bowl tickets. You won. One. 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 For ten special friends. <laughs> Needless to say, there was an abundance of happiness. Especially from the knucklehead to the car park. Are those Super Bowl tickets? Yes, dude! You're going to the Super Bowl! And as joy fell on so many, humiliation was brought to one. So just, where is it? It's a little bit of Called the Super Bowl. Um, Carl, I found a pancake supplier. Do you remember me? It's yours. Yeah. And the last, most important ticket of all, was given to Carly from accounts receivable. Indianapolis, baby. <laughs> Indianapolis, baby. Indianapolis, Indy. Is this Indianapolis? A tale that ended with me and ten friends at the Super Bowl. The most epic day in the world. So what, for those of you who watch NFL, what you're going to see over the course of the season is every one of those individual friends are going to show up in individual uh, commercials where they're going to, you're going to see the interaction between Ned and uh, the invitation. Uh, so it's pretty cool. The, um, as I mentioned, the CEO hasn't seen it. This is the first time it's been showed outside. We, in fact, when I saw it earlier this week, uh, the overlay from Morgan Freeman wasn't there yet. We had another uh, voice actor. So uh, it's fresh. Uh, and, and again, reinforcing a couple things. If I showed you the, the ads that we used to run five years ago, it was lots of very fluffy, very feel-good brand advertising that made you feel good things about Visa. But I think it wasn't all that relevant, and it was absolutely directly tied to TV. Now we're running these things that hopefully the stories that we're going to run, and we'll do a bunch of things off of it that hopefully will go viral. Maybe they won't. But the other thing that's, that's I think, is important you're, you're seeing a lot more of a grainy feel to the spots, um, more almost reality TV-ish, and, um, and it's much more tied to transactions. Um, so we're trying to drive behavior as opposed to just send advertising out there that makes people feel good about the brand but really doesn't drive the business. So for a finance major, uh, I've had to become much more uh, focused on the brand, and it's because it's a big part of the company. So I've been able to adapt, foreshadowing some things that we'll talk about later on. So uh, I've already talked to you at the high level about what the company is. I think it's a great business in that um, we've got 2 billion cardholders around the world with Visa branded cards, uh, 30 million merchants. We've got thousands of banks that either issue cards or what we call acquire merchants. And then we've got this enormous technology infrastructure that you never have to think about, but it always works. Um, so. Um, that's the role that we play as a network. When you dive into the detail, I think it's even more impressive. So um, every day we're processing over 100 million transactions around the globe. When you look at the individual transactions, it's more than all the world's stock exchanges combined. 175 currencies we settle in, 30 million acceptance locations I already talked about. The data centers, the largest of which uh, isn't too far away from here in Virginia, I'm not allowed to tell you exactly where it's at, uh, but uh, it processes over 24,000 transactions a second. As much as people talk about PayPal and other emerging forms of payment, PayPal can't process 100 transactions a second. So big pipes, um, and it's all designed to make commerce work every day, not just for us going down and buying a pizza, but for large businesses ordering uh, massive supplies over with, with huge vendors. Um, every transaction that we process, irrespective of where the cardholder is, where the bank is, where the merchant is, gets processed through the network end to end in less than a second, which is pretty cool. Now as a company, we are um, 
relatively unknown because we're rel as a public company we've only been trading for three and a half years but we're actually the 38th largest market cap company in the US uh, at just over I was looking at the, nowadays you have to check the stock every day the massive financial crisis anybody has any insights on Greece please let me know um, the uh, but, the, but we're, we're about 64 billion market cap uh, we started in 1958, I promise this won't be a history lesson. 1958, Bank of America started issuing cards to consumers in Fresno, and it was just supposed to work in that local market. Uh, they figured out pretty quickly that there were scalability problems. Even a bank as large as the Bank of America, which was the largest bank in the U.S. at the time, couldn't really get it going. There were interstate banking laws and all kinds of reasons why they just couldn't get it to where they needed to go. So they created a separate company that would franchise these Visa, uh, the Visa brand, the Visa products to other banks who would then issue cards and sign up merchants and then there was sort of, it was the original viral effect. Um, so, it's me again. Uh, when I joined in 1993, the company had been in existence for a number of years. As you can see, uh, Visa is a company that spun off officially from the Bank of America in 1970. So it had been around for over 25 years. And while we round into trillions, so it looks small, a quarter of a billion dollars in volume uh, is what the company was processing annually in 1993. But here's what I think is just a fa fascinating thing. So in 15 years, roughly, we increased the volume going through the network by tenfold. Uh, we, at that point, we were operating as a company in Asia, a separate company in Latin America, a separate company in Canada, the US. We were a federation of different companies that was a function of this franchise model it created. I spent two years of my life traveling around the world trying to convince these local companies to sort of merge into one. Uh, and there were a whole host of reasons why we wanted to do it, not the least of which is the next slide you're gonna see where we took the company public, but it was, uh, it was a fascinating experience trying to get a bunch of people to do uh, what they weren't naturally inclined to do. But we merged uh, six different companies to form a singular company in late 2007. In 2008, uh, and I was, uh, I had what I thought was a pretty interesting role. I, I managed the investment banking syndicate. So there were 40 investment banks around the globe that helped us go public. So traveled uh, literally to every corner of the globe, talking to investors, talking to banks about buying the stock, supporting the IPO. And when we went public with uh, the V symbol, so uh, Visa's stock is just V, we went public in uh, early 2008. It was the largest, still is the largest IPO in uh, US history. It was some Chinese bank that I've never heard of that uh, is larger, but in the US we're largest. What's happened since 2008 is we've absolutely grown the business. So we're at, uh, globally trending. We'll hit, we'll hit four trillion in volume which is just massive. The U.S. economy, uh, the consumer economy, is just over 10 trillion. So when you look at uh, the size of the company, it's grown remarkably in recent years. Unfortunately, when companies get big, you all have seen it with Microsoft, we're sort of a function of this. When you get big, you get regulated. Um, and um, not only were we big and, and Federal Reserve banks and regulators were interested in us, we got swept up in uh, the financial regulation that is uh, referred to in the U.S. called Dodd-Frank. Uh, and I've, uh, while I have responsibilities over North and South America, I've probably spent a third of my, uh, my uh, working hours over the last 18 months in Washington, D.C. So it hasn't been fun. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we're at the final stages of working some of the regulation through. It's, it's actually been okay for our business, but it's been an enormous distraction. And, and from my standpoint, I'm not a politically oriented person. I didn't know anything about the legislative or regulatory process, uh, other than those things that I saw on Saturday morning TV when I was very young. And um, you know, it's, it's been sobering, it's been frustrating, but it's also a function of just how you evolve um, in a career and you do what you need to do based on the situations that are facing the company. So um, we're gonna be fine, but uh, we now talk about uh, constructive engagements with governments as being a central pillar to how we operate as a, as a company. So, Everyone probably thinks of us as a card and a card brand. Um, 
when you look at what's happening in the broader environment, there's lots going on that's not card. Uh, E-commerce is close to 20%, one in five, close to one in five transactions that happens through our network in the US is online. Uh, card's not all that relevant in that context. And, um, and in fact, uh, what we're seeing, just to give you a little bit of uh, an insight as to where the world's going for things that are relevant to us, I think they're relevant to you, is this massive convergence of the online world with the mobile phone, the physical world with the card, and uh, while these places and these environments sort of set, s exist separate and distinct from one another at the moment, I think when you fast forward five years from now, the lines are going to be really blurred. And we're investing in a host of products and services to actually facilitate that blurring. So, um, and it's not just form factors like mobile phone, it's not just the internet, it's not just e-commerce. A big driver of this, and I'm usually spending a lot of time talking to old white bankers who don't get this, but you guys get it, it's social networking, it's online gaming, it's the commerce that's finding its way into the social networks with Facebook credits. What traditional money has meant historically is going to be redefined over the coming years. And um, as a company, we're committed to making sure that we're not uh, sort of Kodak uh, in payments. We, we need to be embracing of it. So we bought a company called PlaySpan that um, supports online gaming and supports over 100 different currencies uh, that are mostly not currencies issued by central banks, but they're currencies that have sort of emerged over the last few years online. We're blending that into uh, our business. We're, um, we're building electronic wallet platforms that are going to deal with the reality that while today when most people are online, they're doing it through a PC, every bit of research that tell, uh, we're doing says that by 2015, more consumer experiences online will be through their mobile device than will be online or uh, through the PC. So the lines we'll have in the not so distant future is a mobile phone that's enabled to be able to transact um, you know, with, in a way that a card does today. Now, what you'll see in the press from Google and Apple uh, and a few others, uh, PayPal, they're getting it wrong in that they're spending a lot of time talking about how people are going to wave phones at the point of sale. That'll happen at some point, but actually the first jump is going to be, for those of you who ever try to transact online um, using your Visa account number or any other account number with your mobile phone, it doesn't work. I mean, trying to punch all the numbers in, the form fills, the other things just don't happen. They're not easy. You're in maybe even an online game and they want to take you out and have you transact somewhere else. It's ugly. So where we're spending more of our time and where we think we're going to be right is enabling the mobile phone to be able to shop and be able to transact inside social networks in online gaming environments more efficiently first. So the lines are going to blur between e-com and m-com and the mobile phone first. And then over time, the next wave will be physical world. What people don't really understand is that there's 12 million terminals in the United States that need to get swapped out. They need to get unplugged. They need to get reprogrammed into physical points of sale. And while everyone's nervous that they're missing the boat there, that'll take years. But the transformation that I just talked about in terms of social network, online gaming, and e-com onto the mobile phone, that'll be here in the next 18 months. And we're rolling out some things this year that, that I think will accelerate that. So we're pretty excited about it. And um, it's important in the context of evolving your company, evolving how you think about um, products and services, keeping the end user in mind, and um, having the courage to look at what the competition's doing, look at your legacy business, and think differently. So um, the other piece that's going to drive our growth beyond sort of this product innovation and the convergence of online, mobile, and, um, and physical world is prior to 2007, we were owned by banks. Literally, we were just a tool of the banks. They wanted us to issue car, uh, facilitate credit card issuance, we'd do that. When we spun off from the banks with the IPO in 2008, they are now our customers. And it's great, we've got 16,000 of them that I spend time talking to all the time, two billion cards that they issue, but a big part of our customer base needs to be outside of the banks. 
Um, there's two billion, actually two and a half billion people on the planet that don't have a relationship with a bank. Um, and that number is actually getting bigger, not smaller. So a big part of